Mann. Rob, Anzug, ihr Bloody Frauen, Mann. Hallo? He's back, Rob. Who's back? I'm stuck in the bloody closet. Thought you had a girlfriend? Not like that, I'm hiding in the cupboard, man. What for? I need your help, Rob. Grab a pole, or a bat, or like an umbrella, or like a cricket bat, or a baseball bat, or any sort of bat, and just get here. Now! Two seconds, I'll just, I'll finish this off. Today we are talking about how you can actually make things look more cinematic by adding some mess to your set. But before we begin, why don't you consider subscribing and hitting that bell? You can always unsubscribe if you don't like the video. We've been watching the latest season of Stranger Things and we've been inspired to create something that gives off a messy, lived-in, retro vibe. Let's break it down. We begin with the bare essentials of the scene. In the script it reads, Rob is sitting playing video games. So we grabbed Rob's NES, we hooked it up to an old TV, and sat him down on a beanbag. But clearly there is something missing from this scene. The shooting space is just too bare, it doesn't look real, there's not enough stuff. So we grabbed everything in the studio that looked old, retro, and domestic, and we started placing things in the frame, starting with the background. The bookshelf is a good start already, but we rearranged the visible shelves, placing a foam finger, a Super 8mm camera, and a picture frame from the breakfast club, making the shelves a bit more informal and hitting that 80s vibe. Then we needed to put something on this bare wall here. We grabbed a poster from one of our films backstage and we stuck it up with some blue tack. Thankfully the poster is already designed to look like it's from the 1980s, so this was an easy one. We popped a floor lamp in the background to light up the poster and the bookshelf and it also comes in handy for the lighting setup. More on the lighting setup in a second. Lastly, we needed to hide the door to our editing room. So we wheeled over our costume reel and literally just placed it in front of the door. We decided to bring the costume reel into the mid-ground on a slight angle. This closes the space a bit more, making it a little bit more cosy. We also piled up some plastic crates on the other side of the subject. This fills the space, but it also hides the extension cable and the light stand that was previously in shot. If you find you're struggling to keep your equipment out of shot, the next best thing is to hide it using props and set dressings. We had a pile of magazines laying around, so we threw them into the frame. From a distance, they look a little bit like comic books, and we even topped the stack of magazines with a few old cigarette boxes to make it feel more lived in. But don't smoke, it's bad for you. We placed in the phone a necessary prop in the script for later on in the scene. The last mid-ground set dressing was a Persian rug. We wanted to give the floor some colour and texture, so this worked really well. In the foreground, we had the TV on one side, so we placed in a stack of old suitcases and put the NES box on the other side to give us this natural dark vignette and a nice frame to shoot through. We included a pizza box and we stacked up some NES game boxes and another controller for even more mess. Obviously, when you dress a set, your set dressings and your props should relate to either the character the story or the scene. We have an episode about that right here if you want to find out more. Next up we have the lighting. Our key light in the scene is from this old TV. In order to manage the exposure levels, we motivated that light with a small LED effects light set to a slow pulse. We set the exposure levels to the 70 range on the subject's skin when the light is at its brightest. We have an episode on false colour and how to set exposure levels for different lighting setups here if you want to find out more. That practical floor lamp we placed in the background earlier meant we could add a few extra sneaky production lights into the scene using the floor lamp as a motivating source. We used an Aperture Mini 20 to give the subject a hair light and we pointed our Astoria LED light panel towards the ceiling to bring up the ambient light in the scene. Floor lamps are great to place in a scene if you do intend to bounce light off the ceiling because the direction of the light between both sources looks very natural. If you do add light to a scene, it's always better to accompany it with a practical source to ground it in reality. Think to yourself, where is the light coming from? 
The music in this video is from Artlist.io and their Stranger Things inspired collection. If you use our link down below, you can actually get two free extra months on your yearly subscription when you subscribe. Following our link also helps support the channel. If you've got any comments or questions about this video, leave them in the comments box down below. Subscribe for more videos just like this one and remember to achieve it one shot at a time.